We first met 29 years ago, we think. A few drinks have passed since then, so I'm not absolutely sure, but it's 29 years ago. And Rick was an art college student, and I was a university student. And uh, in 88 to 89, we shared a house together in East Devon. And uh, Rick would set off in the morning with his easel and his canvases and his paints. And uh, at that time, I remember watching him from the room, from the room there, so seeing him go off the early morning sun over the hill. I said to his girlfriend, just staying there, isn't it it's idyllic, isn't it? Why the hell does I hear a story? And I uh, <laughs> watched him go over the hills, and uh, then, so about two hours, three hours later, we thought we'd take him a cup of tea or a glass of wine or something or other. As we walked off over the hills to where we thought he was painting, and as we neared the spot, you could just hear, FUCK! <laughs> <laughs> Even then, he was suffering for his art. <laughs> managed to make a, a, a career out of suffering. <laughs> yeah. um, over the years, he has shown enormous dedication to, to painting. In the face of uh, what can or has been at times the quite a hostile replicator, a reaction from people who think landscape painting in the modern world is going to be orange and green and you know, brown and black in the sky and as many clashing colours as you possibly can. If you put contemporary landscape painting into a Google search engine, you will get the most um, huge rash of colours with no subtlety, no real skill coming back at you. It's extraordinary how low that genre has sunk. But that's actually a really good starting point to talk about what Rick really does. Now I'm going to have, I'm going to take this opportunity just to say a few words because it's nice to be able to, to celebrate this. We don't always have landscape painting. It's a really modern thing, really. You, there is no single English landscape painter from the 17th century. Not one. The first British landscape painter was a Welshman, Richard Wilson, born in 1712. The English didn't like landscapes. In fact, Horace Walpole put it very well in 1770 when he said, Who wants to look at cows standing in a field? <laughs> uh, and the French Academy at the end of the 17th century, they categorised all the hierarchy of the genre. And the top form of art was history painting. And the very bottom form of still life, and one of still life, was landscape painting. And the reason was there weren't any people in it. They had this in the sense that in order to be important, it had to be about humanity. And if you look at any single landscape painting from the 18th century, it's always got a person in it. There'll always be somebody there, or looking at the temple, or a shepherd with a sheep, or something like that. There isn't really a single one. I haven't come across any 18th century landscape paintings without people in them. So you, you've got this sort of strange sort of growth of landscape painting in the 18th century. And you know, we, we gradually brought a few Poussins and Claudes that had been painted in France and Italy. And we had the Dutch influence. Dutch did do landscape painting. And eventually we started to paint our own. And over the course of the 18th century, people in England started to think, actually the landscape's pretty remarkable, isn't it? And you have this movement in the 18th century, which you could relate to romanticism, which is about the sublime. Sublime in the 18th century means just below heaven, almost up to the limit. And people looked at remarkable natural environments and thought, we want to paint them, we want to capture them, because that's, that is creation, that is as good as it can get, that's fantastic. And you know, as well as everybody else does, that this carried on until you get the majestic works of Turner in the, in the 19th century. And then the British lose their way a bit, and the French Impressionists keep the, uh, the, the flame burning for a while, and then the 20th century landscape painting just flops, <coughs> completely flops. And the best landscape art is really the stuff in the landscape itself. So, what I look at, what I see when I look at Rick's paintings is somebody who is actually bold enough to say, I can paint as well as the 18th century people who strove to get the sublime, to, re to represent something the majesty in their eyes of God's creation. Now Rick is a little more religious than I am. It's not about God from, uh, from my point of view, nor from his. It's, it's about, wow, that is fantastic. That I'm so lucky to be able to see it. I want to celebrate it. I want to be part of it. If that was a photograph, it would probably make a nice photograph, but it's the seeing 
It's almost like he's saying to us, I see, therefore I am. <laughs> and, and, and therefore it's a celebration of our place in the world. And that, to my mind, is what is so special. Because all those great landscape paintings are about our place in the world. They are not about the object you're looking at. They're reflecting what the artist says. And if anybody wants to see some more of Rick's work, there are 20 more paintings than I have. So <laughs> you are more than welcome to come around at 8 o'clock and have a look at any of them. We opened house from 1809. Come along and have a look at any paintings you want to see there. And you'll see some of his best metaphorical work. Because you've got woods which are dazzling, but there's no path through them. And if you want, that, that's a great analogy, I think, for the, uh, the, 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 the modern human way of life, our fumbling through the world. But you've also got sea. The, the, the most dramatic sea hangs in my study, and there's nothing in the middle. If you were a seascape aficionado, you'd look at this and think, well, where's the wrecked ship? <laughs> it's just sea, that's it. And if you look at this, and it's, it's really bold in the way that there's nothing but turning waves. And then you realise that, God, the nihilism of that. And then you start to appreciate the artist himself has already been there. If you think that the, the, the life is a, a seascape and there's no salvation, then you actually have the artist who's been there before. So there are these metaphors as well, and you see them here in this, in, in this work, in, in the moonlight, the, the vapour trails of laughter tour and things like that. And so it, it says something to me about our, our, our place in the world, but the skies that are like this just for now, I can see them, they have this reaction only just for now, and then Laughter at all will be there, same road as ever, and the sky will never look the same again. So I think it's poetic, beautiful, bold, and absolutely marvellous. And I think, in due course, he'll get more and more recognition for being an outstanding landscape painter. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>